everyone and welcome to my channel um thank you so much for subscribing to the channel we've hit thousand subscribers i have posted on my instagram and i do have the q a video coming up in a short time um i haven't posted in a little bit because i was very very sick i'm not sure if you guys can still see it on my face but still recovering um however because i haven't posted in a long time and we reached thousand subscribers i thought we'll do first an informative video um from one of the q a that you guys posted on instagram and then finally we'll go into the personal questions in a separate video with that q a so without further ado we'll dive into today's topic which is the crest form so the crest form essentially stands for certificate of readiness to enter specialty training crs which makes sense um and it's something that you have to get signed and you have to upload on oriel if you're going to apply for training obviously we're very very close to this first round of training applications and therefore there have been tons of questions regarding crest form its rules how you get it signed off certain tips and tricks and in today's video i am going to basically talk to you guys about who can sign your form what are the rules regarding it and certain tips and tricks that you can do um, to get it signed off um, and then the second part of the video, which is not going to be posted today, but it's going to be a separate video. I'm actually going to walk through every single component that is part of the Crest form. It's a very lengthy sort of uh, form, but it's generally um, self-explanatory. Although, because some people have not been able to get it signed off, I've had several questions regarding that. Therefore, I have decided to make a separate video where I talk about every single component of the Crest form and where you can get this signed off or you can get sort of um, evidence so that someone can sign you off regarding those things that I've been asked for. But obviously, in today's video, we're going to only talk about how to get it signed as quickly as possible. So the first important thing regarding the signing of your Crest form is that it has to be signed by a consultant. Um, it cannot be signed by anybody else, so it has to be a consultant or equivalent. A consultant is somebody who obviously is on the GMC register for specialty consultants, but general practitioners are also concerned with consultants, so you can use them to get your Crest form signed as well. And there's a question regarding what is a consultant or is only CCT a consultant, other people are consultants as well. Well, CCT is a consultant, any person who has had Caesar is a consultant, and also people who are trying to get this signed off from their home countries. If the person is a consultant and they are registered to the home body, say for example for Pakistan, it is PMBC. If they are registered with PMBC as a consultant, then they can also sign your Crest form. Um, but I'm guessing they also have a body and if they are registered there, you can get it signed off. I wouldn't generally recommend directly getting into training. I do have a video regarding that. You can watch that video. But if you are someone who's desperate to leave or wants to enter training as soon as possible and you don't have any prior sort of choices regarding where you want to go, then yes, you can get your Crest form signed off from your home country. And yes, you can apply to training quite easily for GP and psych. A caveat regarding this is that you have to have worked with whoever is signing your form for 3.5 months. So you can't just come to UK, say for example, you're coming in August and you want to apply for the first round. You can't get your, you know, essentially your form signed off before the end of October. So August, September, October, you'll be running a very tight ship if you want to, you know, start pretty soon or if you're starting right now to get your Crest form signed. If you do feel like you're running out of time, that's absolutely fine. You're not running against time here. You can go and go ahead and apply for a second round or for the next year. Um, because getting a crest form signed off is not as easy as most people think. And this includes a substantial post, so no sort of clinical attachments or observerships would be considered a time period to have worked with your consultant, if that makes sense. The other thing I also wanted to tell you is that only one consultant can sign the entire form. So basically, you can't have multiple consultants sign you off, if that makes any sense. It has to be one consultant. Another thing that is really, really important and it happens to a lot of people commonly is that when they upload their Crest form, they forget to attach the GMC registration of their consultant or say for example, if the consultant who signed your form has not been a part of GMC and it's some other you know regulatory body, you have to attach it within your Crest form. So on Oriel, you can only upload one document. So you have to convert your Crest form into a PDF file 
And in that PDF file, you also have to attach the GMC registration document or the whatever regulatory body document of the consultant who assigned your crest form. I know it sounds redundant because the number is there, they could easily go and search, but they don't want to. It's very clearly written in the rules that you have to attach the consultant's evidence of regulatory body registration within your crest form. So make sure that it's one file and you upload it on Oriel on time. Another question that's also asked a lot regarding the crest form is whether someone who say for example did their F1 but then they didn't complete their F2, can they get a crest form signed instead or do they have to complete their foundation years? This is where it gets tricky because some people um, essentially never do a foundation year and then it's okay, you can just get your crest form signed. But if you are in the UK, you've graduated from the UK and you were a part of the F1 program, Either you have to do an F2 standalone post or you have to talk to your UK FPO, which is the person who's going to assign your F1 and F2 roles and discuss with them what your options are. Sometimes they will let you return back to training and complete your F2 years or sometimes that may not happen and you may have to kind of wiggle around and it gets complicated. So if you're a foundation year and you're watching this video, um, please don't quit foundation year before you get your GMC training because there is, alternate, there is no alternative pathway for you to get GMC registration. They won't let you do a crest form if you are a graduate from the UK. Obviously, people who have graduated outside the UK, meaning not just from you know Pakistan, India or whatever, but people from the European countries or, I don't know, Bulgaria or other places where people go for you know this stuff. You can get your crest form signed. Even I think people from Ireland can do that, but don't go me confirm from your UK FPO, FIFO, um, you think about, you know, in, in my opinion, don't quit. If you're in foundation year, just don't quit. Freeze your year if it's really burning you out, but don't quit because otherwise it becomes really, really difficult if you ever want to enter training at any point in your life after, you know, certain breaks. This form is quite lengthy. I won't say it's a complicated form. Um, it's not something that you can never achieve because some people will tell you that, that some people who don't want to sign your form might say that to you, that it's too difficult, I won't sign your form. Um, it's not a difficult thing to achieve, it's just that it's very long and the consultant has to sit down and then essentially has to sign you off and then they're responsible for signing you off and not every consultant is going to be able to do that because they don't want to. Let's be clear, it's not a difficult form. You're not, you know, applying for like specialty registrarship, right? It's a normal... F1, F2 competency for most of us have done their F1s in their home countries or have a trust grade job here. So essentially you are capable of getting the form signed. It's about the person who's signing your form. And because it's so lengthy, each and every single sentence or point is like four or five sentences. So whoever you ask has to sit down with you, has to go through your bits, has to read it, and then essentially take the right box so that you can get your form completed and signed off and therefore it gets a bit tricky um, and that's why this video is being made. I would suggest to print the form in physical, find a consultant who's willing to sign your crest form, sit down with them and then physically make them sign everything and tick everything and then re-scan the form and put it back into the system as a digital PDF. I think it's more easier that way because essentially getting things signed off um, or making them read on a laptop or stuff is just harder and it's difficult to run after someone with a digital format. Um, if you have a written format, it's printed, you can run after them with a pen and sort of nudge them to sign your press form. Another thing to keep in mind, which is what happened to me, is that the form gets updated almost every year. And it's a very tiny update, but then the name of the form or the year of the form, to be exact, is changed. So the year 2020, where I wanted to apply for training, and I didn't because I got COVID, um, I had gotten my form signed before, you know, December timing. But when I actually was healthy enough to apply for training, which was in 2021, uh, I thought, okay, I just don't need another form because I'll just get this one because I already have it. But they had changed the form and I realized that like a week before the application process was going to close, because um, I just have to upload it, right? So I didn't really care. And then I opened and I realized, oh, it says version 2021 is the only version that's going to get accepted. So therefore, I then had to run around to my consultant, bless him, and he signed it off quickly because he had previously signed this as well. But that's what I'm saying. This year, the form has changed. 
it says version 2024 and they're only going to accept the version 2024 so the uploading and the signing and everything you have to do with the version 2024 right so we have now discussed what the crest form is what are their rules who can sign your form and now we're going to move on to how you can get your form signed so as i've mentioned previously i'm not going to talk about every single component i'm going to upload a separate video explaining every single thing but basically what you need to do starting from today onwards is to get a horus portfolio a horus portfolio is something each trust can give you for free it is for foundation trainees regardless whether you're foundation or you're not you're going to get the crest signed, which is an equivalent form for foundation competency. Therefore, Horus portfolio is your best friend. Departments where it's difficult to get a consultant to sit with you and sign your crest form is where your Horus portfolio is, coming, is going to come into play. It has all the forms that you need to get signed off, such as DOPS, MSFs, MTRs, all of the fancy stuff that you are required to show for evidence, for your clinical competence, for your communication competence, for all the competencies that we will discuss in the separate video. But basically, Horus portfolio is what you will use to actually have evidence to show whoever consultant you're going to go and yet get your crest form signed from. Essentially, because I was working in a department where I was the only person who was the F2 level person. So I was dealing with a lot of things, which was obviously quite evident in the entire department. My consultants didn't really want written evidence because I had registrar DOPS and all of the stuff. So essentially your consultant doesn't have to sign you off. So essentially your consultant doesn't need to have like, how to explain this? So they don't actually need to see you doing all of the stuff. Okay. As long as you have evidence, through these DOPS or whatever, through the Horus portfolio, and another registrar has signed you off. So are you getting what I'm trying to say? A registrar can sign you off for your clinical competence, but they can't sign your crest form. So if you collect enough evidence through your Horus portfolio, and then you sit with a consultant who then goes through your clinical evidence on your portfolio, then they can sign you off. So a consultant just needs to take personally witnessed, evidence received, and able to confirm. So for the entire crest form, you have to have either personally witnessed ticked or evidence received. Ideally, I would suggest that you ask your consultant to write personally witnessed. Some of them are very happy to do that because they've seen you work. Um, if you've been working there for more than 3.5 months, they're definitely going to do a personally witnessed for you. If you're on short in time and you're using evidence, they might then take, you know, evidence received. And if they have ticked, evidence received that sort of comp it doesn't complicate things but you actually have to write down the gmc details of the persons all of the people the list of people who have signed off your horus portfolio forms um onto the form there is a section in the form and you fill that and you attach all of that so basically your pdf form will not only now contain the form plus the consultant who's signing your offices regulatory body whatever you know the certificate and then also the list of all the people who you've used to provide evidence so all of this has again has to be one form one document that you're going to upload on oreo sometimes they do contact these people that you've listed in your form to verify whether they've actually witnessed or not it usually does not happen if you've attached everyone's details and it's all written there it doesn't normally happen but i have heard that it has happened to some people so therefore make sure that whoever you know whose name whoever's name you're using um they're aware that you're you're using their name and you're using their gmc registration um and most registrars are quite happy to do that so that is not something that you should be concerned about but as i said ideally ask a consultant to just sign personally witnessed like it's just easier that way and finally you need to get your hospital stamp i know people who did everything correctly and forgot to get the hospital stamp on the actual crest form so please do not forget that and once all of this is done, you will then, again, please, please, please make sure that your PDF document is one document. And as I've mentioned, all of these things like the crest form, your consultants, regulatory documentation, any lists of people that you use for verification and the horse portfolio, everything is in one PDF document. And then you upload that one document into the Oreo where you have to upload your crest form. And make sure once you've uploaded, you keep checking because sometimes they do give you an email or sometimes there's a notification on Oriel stating that they haven't accepted your crest form and they will give you a deadline stating that this is your deadline. Please upload a new crest form. 
which is satisfactory so they will let you know if you have uploaded an unsatisfactory crest form and i have kind of covered every single thing in this video which can be a cause of your crest form to be unsatisfactory so make sure that you have done every single thing clearly um and inshallah your problems it won't happen they will accept it but make sure that you are careful in uploading and using you know the correct portfolio the correct people the correct everything <clears throat> so hopefully this video guides you on where to start with your crest form and what are the things that you can do to have enough evidence to get a consultant to sign you off and the ones that actually would sign you off if someone says no that's fine you can ask another consultant it doesn't have to be a consultant which you have worked with every single day any person who you've been employed around in their department for more than 3.5 months is someone who can sign you off so anyone who's willing to sign your crest form happily you can get them to sign your crest form you don't have to go through your supervisors or your es or your cs or whatever any single consultant can sign your crest form as long as they're willing to do it you can get your crest form signed so i hope this video helps you guys to get into training best of luck for this round if you have any queries i will respond on my instagram and the instagram is linked down below once again thank you so much everyone for subscribing to the channel keep commenting keep giving me feedback it really encourages me to make more videos and i will see you guys in my next video bye